Okay, so these are little uh, notes from Mike Lee on one point perspective. And this was the problem. So I'll just repeat it, which was there's a little courtyard garden and it's uh, 20 feet by 20 feet by 10 feet tall. There's a wall around it and it's open on the top. And in that space, there are several objects. One is a tree uh, at this location, which is the crossing of this. Um, lines which is from the grid at five feet each uh, line and then there's a fountain kitty corner from it there's a planter uh, in the corner taking up two squares and there's a person looking at the scene that's also away 20 feet from the front plane uh, sort of an imaginary glass wall there uh, looking at the scene they're looking pretty much straight at the tree so they're a little bit off-centered in relationship to the uh, environment Okay. And then the last object is a, uh, uh, a bench on the left side, 8 by 2 by 1 and a half feet tall. And the person uh, looking is about 5 feet tall, that is their eyesight is at 5 feet. Okay, so their height is half the height of the uh, wall that surrounds the space. So I think I got all the items. And just very quickly, uh, you know, in reality, when you have perspective, you have really three vanishing points. I mean, let's say a building or a, or a cube. Um, and, um, and so the third one we tend to kind of neglect because it makes things simpler to just make those lines straight because we associate, associate verticals with verticals, right? With being vertical. So you'll see this in uh, uh, photography, architectural photography, all the buildings look straight. Um, that's a little bit of a trick because normally you know, especially in a tall building, it would be vanishing out, right? So, um, in this case, in, so normally you have two points, but in our case right now we're just doing one, okay? Where everything uh, falls into one vanishing point. Um, so the first trick to determine a couple of things is um, this idea that if you place your uh, viewer at exactly half, at exactly the same distance as the depth of that room, um, then uh, you get a couple of nice uh, advantages. Okay, the first one is that uh, this would be your plane, right? The glass in front of the garden is kind of like your drawing board in a sense. Um, so if you have a, if you had another person at the opposite end, at 20 feet away, uh, then that image projected onto that plane is going to be um, exactly half the image, just because simple geometry. Okay, so if I take a rectangle, these two distances are the same, then this object is going to be half as big in this spot right here. Okay, it's just a simple simple projection, simple diagonals. Okay. So with that trick, we can establish what the back wall, the corner of the back wall is, this part right here. Um, uh, simply because that's, that's what it looks like. I mean, that's the geometry of it. Um, and essentially, let's see if I can... I have to take a white piece. So if I have this box and I'm looking here and I'm at that same distance, so these two are the same, I can bring that into a kind of a side view and I can say that this corner, which is the back wall here, if I project that to the viewer, sorry, it would be here. would give me exactly, you know, what, what that is. So in our, in our drawing, okay, let's assume for a moment I'm in the center and I project my walls to the center. Now to find out where the thing is in the back, I simply half this line, that is this line. Okay, so these and these are the same. So what I did is I took my horizon line which was at five feet, so it was in the middle of that height of that wall. Um, and then I have the distance from the horizon line to the ground line, and that gives me the back wall, the corner of the back wall. 
uh, which is a nifty trick. That only works, of course, if you are exactly the same distance from the plane of projection and the object that you want to project. Okay, so we'll get back to that in a second. Um, Uh, another nifty thing is, and this will will be true if you have lots of um, lots of people in the in the scene, is that as a rule you want to really have all your heads, all your people line up with the horizon line, okay, or the eye line. Uh, that's because you know most people are about the same height and average, and um, and that's what happens in normal circumstances, okay. So once you have uh, so no matter what you have, you can just draw more and more people and they all look good, okay? So you can draw a little person there and they all look like, what did we say, uh, five feet. So all these people are about five feet tall. If you wanted to do a little kid, then you would align the kid with the baseline of that person who is the starting point is five feet. Let me show another version of that. Okay, so all these lines represent people that are five feet tall because they're all lining up on this horizon line. If I had a guy right here that goes beyond that, then all of a sudden that person's like, in this case, ten feet tall because, you know, because of this reference line. It's a simplification because, of course, if you're on a hill, if you're looking down, etc., 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 but this is good for, like, most uh, situations. Okay. So once again, this is just showing the geometry of how to draw the back wall, you know, in your projection as being exactly at the half point between your horizon line and your ground line, okay, this line right here. Um, you just half that and you get the back wall. Um, so now this is a big jump because we go immediately to the thing, the way it more or less looks. And let me see if I can show the um, yeah, show the plan again. Okay, so again, as a reminder, you're standing here, you're looking straight at the tree, and there are these objects there. And I'm gonna now fold these and see if I can show them at the same time. Um, so the first thing to do in this drawing would have been to take. Um, because it's 20 feet by 10 feet, the front wall, well, that's your main box, that's your window, so to speak. Um, and then the depth, in other words, what this is, we talked about being, again, half of this. Uh, let me take another pen, so it's a little clear. Right? So that's my horizon line, and I go down to my ground line, and I half that, okay? So these are the same, that determines the back of the wall there, okay? Um, then once you have done that, the next thing would have been to establish the vanishing point, which pretty much corresponds with the tree, right? So if you're looking at the tree, if you're positioned exactly in front of the tree, um, oh, okay, uh, that dimension was 15 feet from the side, right? So it, you shifted about three quarters to the side. Uh, so again, you would take your box proportionally, that's 2 by 1 or 20 by 10, and you would move 3 quarters this way, um, and the middle line is your horizon line, right? So that's your vanishing point. So all the lines, boom, 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 every single one, if you have, of course, square things that are placed, you know, in a grid, in a square way, they just, they just all have to go there, every single little one. Um, and that is what gives us the uh, basic box. Okay, so we have 10 feet by 20 feet. We have the vanishing point and the horizon line. And the first thing I do now is just connect my corners because that's going to establish my walls. Just like that. The fact that it's off center makes it more interesting, right? It's more dynamic. It's more just, just plain more interesting. Um, and because of this trick that we talked about here, once I have that line and I get my base here in the back, then all I have to do is then 
bring out this, uh, this intersection this way and this intersection up until it hits the ceiling, so to speak. But remember, we don't have a ceiling, right? Too bad the whole thing looks all black, but on the screen. Um, so that's your basic construction, okay? That gives you kind of this set. Alright? And once you have that, then everything pretty much follows. Um, uh, the first thing you want to do is get that grid down uh, in perspective because that's going to allow you to position your objects in the right spot. And to do that, um, we divide the uh, front line, the ground line, into four segments. Remember, it was a four by four grid. So you just you just project again all those lines to the vanishing point. Okay, but again, when they hit the back wall, there they will, they're going to stop, right? And I'm going to do them pretty strong now, just to emphasize it. Um, then, how do you get? the horizontals. Okay, the trick for that is a, um, um, a diagonal. So in other words, you can draw a diagonal because it's all square. If you draw a diagonal from one corner of the space to the next, at the point where the diagonal intersects these vanishing lines, those are going to be your markers for your, um, for your tiles. Okay? And then you just do them. And then these lines are all going to be parallel, right? Because they're not converging anywhere. Okay, so that's your pretty much your, your grid, okay? Um, once you've done that, the trees in this spot, it's just a matter of carrying over all those points, right? The trees in this spot on the grid, uh, the fountain is in this spot. Uh, the bench is here somewhere, and this other bench corresponds to two squares, which are these two squares right here. Okay. Uh, now, the heights are a little trickier. Uh, what you need to do for those is you need to always refer back to your front plane, where dimensions are um, measurable, right? Because we started out with the original box being 10 feet by 20 feet, so we know that on this side, this is a true 10 feet, right? So if I want to find out something that's say, um, well, let's say the bench is two and a half feet tall, I need to project two and a half feet from the, root, the real dimension here all the way back. So let's try to do that. So if that's 10 feet, half of it would be five, half of that would be two and a half. And I think this is a mistake. Oh, yeah. So that's two and a half feet tall in the front, if I project that to the back, where it hits this line right here, which is the corner of my planter, I bring that up and I get the, the height of that bench in perspective there. So I would repeat that process. Um, let's see, well at this point I can also bring up this point. And because I know this, I can bring this over sideways. Um, then from there I can go to the vanishing point. And here, the back, very back corner is my other corner. So I bring that up, that's already there. So I get that nice planter right there. Okay. Uh, the tree, of course, the only true thing that you need is the spot, and you just, you know, you make whatever tree you want to make. Um, I'm going to make a bonsai Italian pine tree. <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, and we said it was going to be 10 feet tall, so that's about the height of, of this space. So the fountain, you can do whatever you want. You can, you know, make it very low, or maybe it's like a little, you know, and you can do your ellipses there, as long as it's centered here on that other spot. Um, now the bench, we have the advantage that it's right on, on our true dimensions plane, so it's... We said it's one and a half feet tall. So again, I tried to figure out on this line, if that's 10, this would be five, this would be two and a half. So 
two and a half, I'm just gonna eyeball it, and I'm gonna say, what is it, one and a half, so if that's two and a half, one, two, and a half, so one and a half, and I'm doing it a little, a little I think I did a little high there. So anyway, once it's established, the same thing, the width again is a true, the, true uh, measurement because it's two feet wide. So I just know that two feet is going to be slip, slightly less than half of this because this is 5, 10, 20. Uh, so I just tie it out that way and I bring my lines. Okay. And eight feet. Now, because of the grid, I know that half, two of these are at 10, so I'm just going to say it's somewhere maybe there. And again, I bring it up, and once I have one spot, I get everything else. Okay? So, I'm just going to quickly um, go through the other drawings. Um, these drawings are getting a little filled with stuff because it's like drawing on top of drawings. Uh, at some point, I'll start fresh from blank white paper. Uh, it might be a little easier to follow, but oops, let me. Um, so it's actually quite simple. Um, it's not overall as dynamic as a two-point perspective, but it's, it's pretty good for basic stuff. Um, and then, of course, you can put people in there, right? So the people, again, you'd have to decide, you know, they would be, what did we say, five feet tall here. So if I project, as long as they are on this horizon line, uh, let's see, if I do it like this, well, you see, they're falling there, so they're five feet, but they're in the back. Um, if I put them in front, they're still five feet. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, yeah, these are just my, some of my variations. Put little animals, little birds. Um, you can make a special bench of your own design. Yeah, so this, this again is just showing that simple little trick of just, just saying, okay, I'm, I'm exactly at the same distance as the depth of that room. And, uh, and then that allows you to do, um, you know, this trick of, of just putting that line, um, you know, halfway between your horizon line and your ground line. Uh, yeah, this is just repeats. through them to see if there is something that I didn't cover. Um, uh, when you do the sketch, just eyeball a, a rectangle that's, you know, 2 to 1 ratio, right? If that's 20, and that's 10, just make a rectangle for your front space that is approximately two squares, right? Um, that's, that's sort of the first thing. Oh, actually, this is nice. This shows, well, this is the miniature version of the larger, of the initial drawing. But again, <coughs> by having that little floor plan that allows you to place your objects um, in the grid. Uh, this just shows that you could have a person that's, uh, this person right here is probably next to the person that's actually looking, right? Because if that's five feet and I double that, yeah, it's probably almost representing the person that's actually looking. Uh, and that's nice too, because you can cut them off and that gives you like a foreground kind of effect. Okay. And this was just showing, you know, what if you had different objects in different spots, again, you know, where uh, where would that be? Although this is actually wrong, it's, it's really this one. Right? Uh, in this grid. This, this grid idea is really, really good because it can help you even in a situation where you might not have a tile floor, right? But just to establish where you want to put stuff, it's nice to draw it to, to give you a, just a 
you know, a framework.